Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and my brisket yesterday turned out perfect. It was really, really good, and you're looking at a picture of it. Yes, when I when I smoke meat on the weekends, a lot of times I will taunt Big Skinny. He is the official smart aleck of the Digital Asset Investor channel, and a lot of times he will uh, he will reply back and show me what he happens to be cooking that weekend as well and he did I, I think let me see if he's down here i can't remember if he tweeted it out or if he replied to this tweet but anyway wait here's somebody else look at this one butt and flat the gunslinger look at his man it makes you hungry just looking at these things but anyway i smoked a real ooh, this is the one i saw yesterday that looks so good this is from king david xrp look at this look at that i want to learn how to cook that um, that is um, smoked whiskey glazed pork shoulder. That looks good. I want that recipe. If you're out there listening, I want that recipe. That sounds good. All right. So, and the big news in my part of the world is that Mississippi State beat LSU. LSU won the national championship last year. And Mississippi State went to LSU and beat them yesterday. And my, my wife was, and my neighbor we're extremely excited because they are huge Mississippi State fans. My wife is because her dad played football at Mississippi State. My neighbor is because he went to Mississippi State. Um, anyway, so good football day yesterday. All right, I saw this from Matthew Lanai, payments and the pandemic. Apparently, let me see, it's, it, this is something that was put out by the Cleveland Fed um, and this, I just thought that it was interesting that they're putting all this on paper. Payments and the pandemic. And in this, one of the lines, improving traditional Federal Reserve financial services, Fed now and central bank digital currency have to do with the future. So the U.S. is going to have a, a central bank digital currency. And he also found this where they mentioned um, the ISO 2, 222. Uh, global standard for several of our payment services, da da da. Anyway, pretty cool find right there. Now, let me get past this. Let's hope that the old internet connection is not staggering on me here. All right, XRP Crypto Wolf made us aware that the Exodus, this is the Exodus um, crypto wallet, is going to support the Spark token airdrop to XRP holders. So I try every time I see one of these, I try to let you know which platforms are set up now to to um so that you can receive your the token drop. All right, um, so there's another one. Now Michelle Vandenberg sent me this, and this is um, Brian Brooks tweeted this out a couple of days ago. I didn't make a video yesterday, so I haven't covered it. This is I, I think this is a very big deal, folks. Hats off to the SEC. Today, the Securities and Exchange Commission issued a no-action letter authorizing crypto security tokens to trade on registered exchanges. Good day for investor protection in an emerging asset class. Now, <clears throat> I read that to, to, to say that now, uh, you know, an E-Trade or, or people, broker, traditional brokers would be able to list digital assets, even if they're called securities. So that's interesting. I, I, and the way I understand that is maybe they will start um, having not, they won't call them ICOs, but maybe people will start being allowed to raise money with tokens in this new emerging asset class, and they'll be able to list those tokens on these platforms. All right. Um, then XRP Crypto will summarize this as well. The SEC issued a no-action letter authorizing uh, security tokens to trade on registered exchanges. And this is the actual letter that was sent out from the SEC about this. Okay. All right. Um, Cambridge, there are 101 million cryptocurrency users. Now, this is interesting because this really, it, it, this really illustrates and shows you 
just how early that we are. And if you look at this, um, this is a study from, from Cambridge or whatever. There are 101 million cryptocurrency users, and they've got some other interesting statistics. Uh, Cambridge University announced this. Um, this year's report said that this number increased by 183%, and the number reached 101 million. While there were 139 million different cryptocurrency addresses in 2018, this number was 191 million in 2020. During this period, both the number of addresses, the number of new users, and the number of addresses per person increased. So here's what you need to get out of this. If you look at this, 101 million cryptocurrency users, and we only have 7.8 billion in the world population. That's how far we have to go, folks. And remember, Arthur Brito, he wanted to design the XRP ledger so that it could support that 7.8 billion. I don't remember the figure he used at the time, but he actually wrote that down somewhere that he, the XRP ledger needed to serve the, the entire population. Now, Michael at VAL5 links. This is an article about Mike Novogratz, and this is a pretty cool quote. The herd is coming. The herd is coming. I kept saying the herd is coming, and I was wrong. It was so slow to come. Now the herd is actually coming, and I see it. I'm getting phone calls every day, and so it's left me very bullish on the overall space. Now, um, this guy today happened to tweet this out, and I thought it was a good place to play it. Um, he says, what does, does he know that you don't? And this is an, an older clip of Brad Garlinghouse talking about Bitcoin. And I bring this up because Michael Novogratz, that's all Michael no Novogratz talks about. And he acts like he doesn't even understand XRP. But I'm more in line with what Brad Garlinghouse is saying here about what could happen. I think, I think if we're solving a real problem and it's a, at scale, uh, then I think it's a compliment. I think the most important thing that is going on in crypto is understanding what is real and what is just hype. Uh, some, I think, may look back on Bitcoin and find that it was the Napster of digital assets. What I mean by that is Napster was the first to digitize music and demonstrate, hey, if you digitize music, you can do a lot of cool things with that. But ultimately, they were circumventing trademark laws, they were circumventing royalty payments, and governments stepped in and Napster was not successful. But Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, they were very successful. I th All right. I think Brad Garlinghouse makes a pretty good point there. Now, um, let's move along. Marcus Treacher had tweeted this out yesterday. Um, he was retweeting the Ripple article we talked about the other day, and he says, interoperability is the key to building a CBDC future. Now, here's how this future is unfolding, folks. We're about to show you the first CBDC, and you're going to see all of this start to, you're going to see all of this. Now, I don't know what this right here is. I'm looking at this while I'm talking. Now, I know for a fact that I follow Ripple. I don't know why it's saying here that I don't follow it. I'm going to click on that in one second to get to the bottom of that. But this is just not true. I don't know if this is just the software of some kind of glitch, but, but I've followed Ripple for a long time. Um, interoperability is key to building a CBDC. And, and basically what I think we're about to see, folks, is you're going to see all these CBDCs come out. And I believe a lot of, I believe that, Maybe not all, but I think a lot of them are going to um, be be pegged to gold or something. And then XRP, maybe XLM are going to be bridges between all of those. That's where I think all this is going. Now, let's click on this to see if it shows. See, I do follow them, but for some reason it showed that I didn't follow them. Oh, well, no big deal. Okay, uh, now we will go to this. XRP Crypto Wolf, the Bahamas Central Bank. Digital currency sand dollar will launch on on October the 20th. So my understanding is that we will be getting our first central bank digital currency out of the Bahamas on October the 20th. So it begins. The CBDC's second phase in 2021 will focus on preparing essential infrastructure services in the government and private sectors, such as utility companies for the CBDC. Moving along. Uh, Jim Rickards tweeted this out because in, in October, we also have the SDR being looked at again. Um, IMF review of the yuan in SDR going along well. Vote set probably in November. Now, I'm not sure. He says not October. So he's saying that he thinks that this SDR change 
is going to go on in November, not October. So that'll be interesting to see how that falls out. Now, Rob Licker sent me in a, a cool article. No internet, no problem. Venezuela gets Bitcoin satellite node. This one's for all of you that thought that the idea of space nodes is crazy talk. No, it's happening. Venezuela has its first Bitcoin satellite node capable of processing transactions w without an internet connection. I'm about to sneeze here. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if I've ever sneezed on this channel. I don't, I don't know that I have. But anyway, the good news is that you don't have to worry about the current events because you can't get it through my YouTube channel. <laughs> Um, and, and I don't have it either, so don't, <laughs> never fear. Um, the, the Venezuelan, Venezuelan space node was set up in the country by these two people. It uses technology from Blockstream, which contracts satellites in this case. Um, Util Sat 113 to broadcast data between points via offline connections. That's huge in a country where internet infrastructure is lacking. So you can see the satellites, this has been the plan all along. And if you think Bitcoin is the only nodes on these satellites, my igloo in Georgia is still for sale. And by the way, speaking of satellites, this is a tweet from SpaceX um, from today. Target, targeting Monday, September 28th at 10.22 a.m. for Falcon 9's launch of 60 they're going to launch 60 more Starlink satellites um, from Florida. 60, folks. All right. Now, this was an interesting little piece of video from Riz XRP. Watch this. I don't know when this is from, but I think it's recent because it shows Christine Lagarde at the ECB, and she's talking about disruption. Listen to this. It's just 44, 44 seconds. That's where this sort of somehow, Turn that up. You know, exotic, interesting object of uh, research is clearly now at the forefront of uh, many of central bank governors' radar screens. So if you couple the, the, the necessary transitioning that will happen in the months to come, plus the transformation of our economy, plus the political determination to address climate change as a major risk, which will also impact the way in which we transport ourselves, the way in which we heat our houses, the way in which we, uh, we eat uh, this this is a massive transformation okay all right let me take that volume back down because the next video will blast your ears off probably okay now um here's where things get interesting folks so strap in because here we go um this is from anders l if you're new to ripple start here made it as simple as possible that is uh, Brad Garlinghouse on stage with the guy who used to run Swift, all right? This is Brad Garlinghouse on stage with the general counsel, the deputy general counsel, I think, of the IMF. This is Brad Garlinghouse in the room with the Bank of International Settlements. That's Christine Lagarde, the BIS chair, the BIS guy that runs runs it, Augustin Car Carstens, I think is his name. He's over here to the left. All these people are more or less central bankers. And then there's Swell, where we, where uh, Ripple had Dr. Ben Bernanke, who was the Federal Reserve Chairman, um, uh, a while back. Okay, so I think that draws you a pretty good picture. And then there was this. Jonathan D. sent me this. This is a little tweet by D David Schwartz, who is great at tweaking everyone in social media. He says, I've been working on a pretty cool surprise for Swell. It's actually where this guy, who in my opinion is clearly saying actually, comes from. He's got this little cartoon character of himself. Now, that brings up something that's coming up that we that you may not be thinking about. Um, Ripple's Swell, I think they're calling it like Swell Global, is coming up. And these are the two keynote speakers, and I wanted to show them to you. The first one is this guy. And I looked into this guy. He's not quite as interesting, but here's his, um, he's from the World Bank. That's pretty interesting, but he's, um, here's what, what, in, what is interesting. He's a practice manager, financial inclusion infrastructure. There's that word, that phrase again, financial inclusion. I did a whole video on it the other day. Words mean things. Phrases mean things. This guy's from the World Bank. Um, 
he's, let's see if there's anything else interesting. He went to Harvard. I mean, you know, he's one of those guys that's, he's one of the, he's one of the uh, people that's in the club, if you, if you will. All right. Now, but this lady is a lot more interesting and I'm about to show you why. Sheila Warren from the World Economic Forum. Let's look at her resume. Head of Blockchain Data and Digital Assets at the World Economic Forum. As we go down, we see World Economic Forum, right? We see Bretton Woods Committee. So you remember Bretton Woods Committee. That keeps popping up. There's the lady that runs the IMF. I uh, don't remember who that is. There's Christine Lagarde. The cast of characters is all the same. Uh, everybody's in the same club. There's Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary of the United States. Nancy Pelosi, don't remember that guy's name. But anyway, this lady is on, who's going to be speaking at Ripple Swell is one of the people that um, is a member of that Bretton Woods Committee. All right, and if you go down, it gives her resume. And of course, she also went to Harvard. It seems like almost everybody that we talk about having to do with Ripple went to Harvard. Uh, but if you go back up in her little LinkedIn profile, this is the interesting part. Look at this. Executive Committee, she's at the World Economic Forum, but look at this. Executive Committee of the World Economic Forum and Leadership Team of the Forum's Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Working with governments, leading companies, and stakeholders around the world to advance adoption of new technologies and global public interest oversee people and culture, da, 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 the center. So she is, um, was at the forum's center for the fourth industrial revolution. Well, I've heard that term before, or, or the center for the fourth industrial revolution. That is a specific, um, center that, that was on a document that we showed you here months and months back. Look at this. This is the document. Remember this? Central Bank Digital Currency Policy Maker Toolkit Center for the, the Center for the, the Fourth Industrial Revolution put this out. This is the document, for those of you that don't remember, most relevant for wholesale CBDC. Crypto assets designed for inter or intrabank payments and settlements. Example, JP Morgan Coin or XRP. Okay, that's written in the document that was put out by the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which is what she is in charge of, and now she happens to go speak at Ripple's Swell. Well, this is the central bank digital policy, and, and if you say, oh, well, she wasn't involved in it, think again, because this is the document, and she happens to be right there, okay? Everything's connected. Um, now, I decided just for, just for, giggles that I would go type in her name and Chris Larson's name on Google. And here's what came up. Chris Larson at Davos, the merging of the web, the physical web and the value web. And that's Chris Larson. And as you go down, here's a little video that they posted of him. Why not just play the whole thing? When you think about the fourth industrial revolution, this is all about the uh, web merging together with the physical web, merging together with sort of the human web, if you will. I would add another one to that, and we would call that the Internet of, of Value. So think of, uh, in terms of where we're going of billions of devices, which are not only internet connected, but actually hold small amounts of value. So they can literally be economic actors themselves. So our phones, our cars aren't just trading information. They're actually trading payments and money with uh, people and with each other and with companies. That just really opens up the scope of where our, our global economy is going. So we think this is sort of a key part of the puzzle of trying to make this fourth industrial revolution as you know, positive and productive for, for people. Right now, because the world is a series of siloed networks, you need correspondent banks in the middle as a workaround. Well, that's, you know, that's 1970s technology. That's what creates these incredible delays in moving cross-border payments, the incredible cost, and sort of the uncertainty of what, what happened to your payment once you, once you send it globally. So that is a part that we think is fundamentally changing. However, I think the benefits of that improvement far outweigh you know, anything that might change with the existing system and actually will provide way more opportunity, not just for new you know, startups, but for the banks themselves. 
you could imagine a scenario where those 50 billion uh, internet connected things, devices, whatever you want to call them, uh, literally now have bank accounts and could be customers of banks. So you could argue that billions of new customers will be coming online to the players in the, in the, in the finance stream. It's all about adopting this new technology, keeping up with change, and then reaping the benefits from it. I think what consumers, through their banks, are now going to have services where money can be sent cross-border instantly uh, at, at greatly reduced costs with sort of maximum competition for the foreign exchange, for example. It's going to open up new avenues for small and medium-sized businesses, which in many ways sometimes are blocked from the global marketplace simply because of the lack of access to efficient payments. Second part, long term, you look out five, ten years in this sort of internet of value that we're going into, you know, once the exchange of value, those costs and time go to zero, you now have all kinds of new applications that simply were not possible in the old world in exactly this kind of the same way that the internet as we've known in the last 20 years, it introduced applications uh, that we could have never imagined. And that's very exciting. So uh, we think that's going to provide all kinds of yet to be determined benefits to consumers. So there's a now impact of all the things we do today. And then there's a, a huge impact of the things we can't even dream about. All right. So there's that. Um, well, <clears throat> now back to this. Um, the, the, just because words mean things and when you, when you see different people using these phrases, it just, it, it, you always have to look into it a little f further. So Chris Larson says fourth, these guys say, uh, fourth industrial revolution. Chris Larson says that, and he's there in Davos at the meeting where these people are. And so I, I, when you, but and when you type in fourth industrial revolution into Google, first two things that pop up is an ad by Accenture, who's an investor in Ripple, and the fourth industrial revolution from the World Economic Forum. You can't, you couldn't make this stuff up if you tried. And then we got, so, so Accenture is all in this, okay? Then you go and look at the Digital Dollar Project. Accenture backs the Digital Dollar Project. And look who's, you know, Chris and Giancarlo and his brother. And then we got these two guys. Well, David Treat, well, it just so happens that XRP Yo-Yo uh, reminded us with this video from David Treat, who's on the Digital Dollar Project and works at Accenture, as you can see here. Um, he is uh, with Accenture. He happens to be on this Digital Dollar Project. Listen to what he says. That's where the big focus of the digital dollar project is around the specific use cases and where it has value and where it doesn't. Um, I think one of the harder use cases, um, sorry, one of the one of the one, some of the biggest progress that we've made globally in domestic faster payments capabilities and and you know things that we we do, we may interact with every day with Zelle or Venmo or PayPal or or our ability to just you you know with our bank send money back and forth to each other seamlessly from an end user perspective working with central bank digital currency if we do it right they shouldn't see a difference. It should be as easy for you, you know, for me to send you 10 bucks, um, you know, or vice versa. Um, it should be relatively transparent. What is transformative is what happens behind the scenes. Mm. The gist of that, that direct token transfer being a single motion, a simple, you know, simpler, you know, uh, you know, simpler exchange versus today where it's me messaging my bank to then message your, you know, and you messaging your bank and our two banks messaging each other. And it's authorization based and, and the like. A lot of a lot of what's going on is going to be behind the scenes. Um, so the it almost sounds like beyond it being a digital dollar, you're you're also circumventing uh, what some would argue is our archaic infrastructure like a SWIFT or CHIPS or Fedwire. It would take on some of those characteristics and make it a little bit more frictionless. Is that what I'm hearing from you? Yeah, I, 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 um, circumventing is probably not the right word because I think I think a player, I think those those core infrastructure players actually have a potential huge role to play because, of course, these tokens have to move across a network. 
We have to be confident that they're secure. We have to have the operational capabilities to make sure that they, you know, that that they're going to be safe, you know, safe and sound, and you know, and their privacy is, you know, preserved where it needs to be. So I wouldn't, um, you know, I, I've seen big engagement from the credit card players, the you know, the 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 major messaging architecture players in the financial ecosystem, um, the recognition of how this gets implemented, and the that's. I'm a digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that Accenture World Economic Forum, they're all in the same game. They all use the same phrases. They all use the, it, it's, it's the same stuff, folks. You couldn't make all this up if you really, if you really, really tried, folks. That's why I've been here for over two years talking about one company and one digital asset because all, all of the indicators are flashing and they point straight at Ripple and XRP. Thanks for listening. Every day, billions of people around the world are mocked, ridiculed, laughed at and embarrassed by their friends, family and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors. The information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected and ostracized, these people give up, never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. Join the free Digital Asset Investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com. Put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.